Welcome to our Good News program. We're so thankful that you tuned in. We have started some of the best lessons, and I say that about every lesson and how exciting the Word of God is. And I want you to get excited over the Word of God. This is the most important thing in life. In the last days, we see people turning from the truth. The first thing that happens is it tells us in Hebrews that people have an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Hebrews chapter 3, you need to memorize that because once you have an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God, the next step is rebellion and the next step is apostasy. So if you doubt, you won't receive any good thing from the Lord. And God's word cannot lie. He cannot lie. He is not a man that he can lie. Every lie you tell, you obey Satan, your enemy. So these lessons are the truth. Israel is the key to world redemption. We want you to understand these seven promises that God gave to Abraham apply to our lives today. We must know this book. And we're going to see today how we can have prosperity and success in these lessons. And Israel is the center of the world, Ezekiel 5.5. 5. There's always been, since the flood, Jerusalem has always been a city. Since the flood. And this is something we need to understand. So, as I got you confused the last lesson, we're going to give this to you again. The first of all, we saw that Abraham was not a Jew. He was a Hebrew that came from another place. That, that's what Hebrew means. Just like Christ came from his father's home, Abraham came from his father's home and his family. He is a Hebrew. Christ is. And then we see the Jew is nicknamed for Judah. That came from Jacob. Jacob's name became Israel. That's where the Israelites came from. Jacob's name became Israel. In Genesis 32, 27, Jacob became Israel for as a prince, as a prince hast thou power with God and with men and hast prevailed. This is prevailed. I'm sorry, prevailed. So this is what Jacob became Israel. That's the Israelites. Jesus Christ is a Israelite. He came through the tribe of Jacob, Israel. He, this is in Hebrews 7, 14, for it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. That means Jew. So he is all three, Hebrews, Jew, and Gentile. But if you ha didn't hear me with these lessons last week, you see, we're all the same in God's sight. The seven promises, we're going to go over them. We want you to memorize them. He said to Abraham, and this is something you must know. He said, and I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee. Make, I will make thy name great. Thou shalt be a blessing. I will bless them that bless thee. I will curse them that curseth thee. You don't want to be cursed because that's what Satan is cursed. And every lie you tell, you obey Satan, your enemy. So we are to love one another the way God has loved us. By this shall all men know you are my disciples if you have love one for another. Why does Satan hate Israel so bad and cause you to hate him? Because he knew 
that our Lord was going to come through that seed. He does everything he can against Christ. He is an antichrist. He is against everything that this book says. That's why if you don't know it, you're not going to live an abundant life and you won't even be in heaven. If you don't know Christ, hell is a place that can't be described. It is so horrendous. You will live in pain forever and ever and ever. You will be in darkness, the blackness of darkness forever. And you will not know any sin that you're doing today. The sin that's keeping you from knowing Christ. And in Colossians, while I'm here at Galatians, that I'm going to read to you, I want you to listen what he says. Colossians 1, verse 12. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints of light. You have to be brought out of darkness into light. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. This is why you must be brought out of darkness into light, out of the power of Satan unto God, before you can be born again by the Spirit of God. And then, here's why you can never, ever hate anyone. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Galatians 3, verse 26. Now verse 27. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ, there is neither Jew nor Greek, neither Jew nor Greek, neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for we are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. And I want you men to listen to this. I want you to listen. I hope and pray that every true child of God today, that this can be, he can say that about every man. For I know him, Abraham, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord and do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring up on Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. Now these are the seven promises, and these have been fulfilled through Abraham. And all the men that are in, and women that are in the Hall of Fame, in Hebrews chapter 11, there's not one sin mentioned against them. Only their faith in God. He never remembers our sin no more. That's what resurrection does. He eradicates our sins. This is something that is needed today more than anything else in this world. And we must obey what his word says. Let's pray. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we thank Thee that we can come to the throne of grace today to obtain mercy and to find grace to help in time of need. Thy grace is sufficient for every need. We come into the holiest by the blood with a true heart and full assurance of faith that whatsoever we ask according to Thy will, this is the confidence we have that if we ask anything according to Thy will, we know that Thou dost hear and that we shall have the petitions we require of thee. So we thank thee today that our great high priest in heaven is taking these prayers to our heavenly Father because he's merciful and faithful and he's touched with our infirmities. Save one hundredfold today because it's not thy will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And for every person that is a child of God, that you're the only person in your family, you can ask God to save your whole family 
and his word says he will. He will pour out thy spirit upon each one, and the divine blood, they have to have the blood for divine, divine birth, divine conception, because this is eternal. This is eternal life. And he said to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Claim this promise today for every person that has any person in their family that hasn't been born again. And God will honor your faith. His word cannot lie. He has given us sworn all of these promises and he is the promiser. Live this abundant life, we pray today. In Christ's name, amen. So as we see these lessons, we're coming back to the lessons on Abraham, and then we will, are going into the book of Isaiah. So he, the first thing that we must understand, he says, in Joshua, after Moses did not go into the land of Canaan, he died, and God buried Moses. We are to be buried, and not honor, not lift up man after they're dead. They could make an idol of that. And we're going to learn about the idols in Psalm 115, the difference in what idols are and the true God and what he says about it. So here we see Joshua went into the land. And he says in Joshua 1-2, the land which I do give to them. Joshua 1-6, this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swore. See, he swears by his own word unto their fathers to give them. Joshua 1, 11, Go over this Jordan to possess the land which the Lord your God giveth you to possess it. Joshua 1, 13, The Lord your God hath given you this land. And in Joshua 1, 8, now this is the true principles for prosperity and success. Joshua 1, 8, God's way to be prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. He has a plan and purpose for every true believer. And you are the one that can receive the blessings in only one way, by obedience and faith in his word. So he says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Now this is his command to us, that thou mayest observe to do all the commandments, not just one, to do all the commandments according to all that is written therein according to all. Every scripture is for us. He says we have exceeding great and precious promises. And then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. And the second thing that we can do is Psalm 122, verse 6. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee, Peace shall be within thy walls, and prosperity in thy palaces. Now he says in verse 8 of Psalm 122, Peace be within thee, because his divine nature is in us. And this divine nature is to be a holy nature. We are to serve him in holiness. We are to serve him in righteousness. Our bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit. And then, when the Jews would go into Jerusalem, they would go into Jerusalem reading the Psalms. And he says in Deuteronomy 440, I, you have to obey these lessons to know all that God has promised you. 440, thou shalt keep therefore his statutes, and his commandments, which I command thee this day, that it may go well with thee and with thy children. The sins are carried down through the fathers to a third and fourth generation. Now, this is God's word. Now, listen at this. 
and with thy children after thee, and that thou mayest prolong thy days, <coughs> excuse me, upon the earth, which the Lord thy God giveth thee forever. This is the way. I know this abundant life, and it's not money, because I don't do this for money. It is knowing God's word and giving it out to you today. This is for you. That's how much God loves you, and that's how much I love you. This is what he wants for every true believer. And he says in Deuteronomy 6, 4, that you must know these truths. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And then, verse 6, and these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. Now, this is a command, and this is how you live the abundant life. I know all about this life. And Genesis 18, 19, I mean, this is, this is so amazing. And I, you, when you give this out, and you repeat it, it's more than anything that anybody can understand. We must understand. Hearken now unto my voice. I will give thee counsel, and God shall be with thee. Be thou for the people to Godward, that thou mayest bring the causes unto God. And thou shalt teach these ordinances. Everything we do, we are to teach his word. Just think of how blessed we are to have his word and not be persecuted for it. So here's what happened in, in Israel, in Jerusalem. Jerusalem stands today about 2,581 feet above sea level, the most beautiful place in all the world. And this, it, he says in Zechariah, the visions he gave Zechariah, we'll go to some of those later, the city is going to be restored in the last days. During Abraham's time, Jerusalem was the nerve center of the world. During the prophets, it was the Old Testament prophets, the truth center of the world. The days of Christ, Jerusalem, was the salvation center of the world. He came to provide salvation unto the world. He's going to be reigning there a thousand years. He called it my land. He calls us his children, his sons. The church age, the age which we're living now, Jerusalem is the storm center of the world. It becomes a burdensome stone for all the people of the world. In Zechariah 12, 3 and Psalm 2, the kings of the world set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, against Israel, against Jerusalem. When Christ comes back, Jerusalem is going to be the peace center of the world. It becomes a center of peace for a thousand years when Christ is going to be reigning. Now that's after the seven year tribulation period because Satan's going to be reigning during that time for seven years. And he is going to be cast into the bottomless pit after the seven year tribulation period. Then we will not have any temptations. Now we will have our glorified bodies in the new Jerusalem and the people that came out of the tribulation period, which is going to be Israel, that they have been giving out God's word for the seven years, 144,000 Jewish, belie Jewish believers, true children of God. Because the first eight years after when Pentecost came, Christ died, he stayed on the earth for 40 days, then he went back to heaven, and 10 days later, he sent the Holy Spirit to dwell in the lives of believers. For the first eight years in Israel, in Jerusalem, 
it was only to the Israelites. It was only to the Israelites. That's why God wrote the book of Hebrews, because they were looking for a king to come, which he had promised them. A king is going to come and reign and be your Messiah. So they rejected Christ, that when Christ came as son of man, because they knew son of God, deity, they rejected this little child. And he blinded their eyes, the Jews' eyes, so that we Gentiles could be saved. This is something that you must understand. It was God that blinded their eyes. They did not put Christ on the cross. He said, no man taketh my life from me. I lay him down of myself. I lay my body down. I have power to take it up. I have power to lay it down. The Jews and Gentiles both hated Jesus because he said he was God. He was the son of God. They put him on the cross, but that did not change his love for the Jews and the Gentiles. That's when actually the church began so that we all could be one in Christ. And if you don't know this, you're going to learn it, that Christ has a two-fold headship, the head of all creation and the head of the church, and we are the body. That's why there can be no division in a believer's life. We have perfect love. So, and the Jews and the people, the Gentiles, that's coming out of the seven-year tribulation period, they are going to be on the earth with their bodies. We will have our spiritual bodies and the body of light. We have been raptured to be with the Lord before the seven-year tribulation period. And we, when we receive the body of light, this is the speed of light, 186,241 miles per second. We get a body of light and we are going to be with him in his kingdom in heaven while the seven year tribulation period is going on. We're going to be raptured. You don't have to have any space shuttle to go to heaven. We're gonna go right up through the clouds, through all of these earth, these great bodies in heaven. And we are going to be with him. This is the glory, this is, and then when we come back, we're gonna reign with him a thousand years. Anybody would be out of their mind not to receive this gift. Just going through the thousand year, just going through the seven year tribulation period is almost like hell. And a thing that I can give you now, because this is important, is in the book of Revelation, and this is something that everyone should understand, we see how hot the weather has been. Well, he is going, when he, the seven-year tribulation period, the fourth vial, our bowl, in, Gen in Revelation chapter 16, and the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. The, the, the sun is going to scorch these men. And men were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God, which hath power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. Now this is what is going to happen. And if you don't know this, you must write these scriptures down and get on your knees today and accept Christ. Now the Gentiles position by nature. This is in Ephesians. Wherefore remember, this is Ephesians 2, that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh 
who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, the Jews had to be circumcised, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God and the world. But God, now in Christ Jesus, you who sometimes were afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Verse 14, for he is our peace who hath broken, who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of petition between us. When that curtain rent, and when he died on the cross, it was open for all people. No more Jew, no more Gentile, one in Christ. These are what's going to happen. And this thousand years speak, this means divine completeness, the glory of our Lord. In the new Jerusalem, the glory center of the universe, the eternal city, Jerusalem. And the names of the 12 tribes are on the gates of that city that will be open day and night. There will be no fear. It will all be perfect peace. And that eternal city is in Jerusalem. And then Ezekiel 40 through 48, the new Jerusalem and the kingdom age. He's even got those Jews, their inheritance in that city then. And that is in Ezekiel 40 through 48. What glory this is, I pray that you have learned that this future kingdom of the Messiah, the kingdom to be supreme, the kingdom to be universal, the kingdom to be perfect peace because he is our peace. Now this has to be after Israel, had the national rebirth of Israel, when he comes back to this earth, they're going to see the nail prints in his hands and they're going to recognize him. But today there's thousands of Jews that have received the Messiah Christ.